What's up, guys? Nolly Williams. I got my boys in the house. We got Curtis Johnson. We got Fred Weaver, the infamous, I should say famous, the most famous guys. And, you know, we, I'm actually at a coffee shop hanging out. I'm in Austin just doing my thing. And uh, I've had a couple of independent brokerages. I'm a broker. I've been a broker for about 11 years. And I've had several independent brokerages that have joined me here at EXP. They've come to have fun. They're playing and they're enjoying life again. <laughs> they're having fun again. And so I thought we'd just kind of have a quick conversation around this whole concept of independent brokerages joining EXP. Uh, what are the pros? What are the cons? What, are you, what, what to look for? So I think this will be a pivotal video uh, for you if you're thinking about possibly or just looking at the idea of uh, bringing your team, your big team, or your brokerage over into uh, EXP. So these guys are the perfect ones. What's up, guys? How we doing? Hey, how you up? doing, Nolly? All right. So Glad I'm doing great. Doing well. Doing well. And it's actually Fred's birthday today. Happy birthday, Fred. Woo. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. So, so um, Fred, I'm going to kick it to you first. Talk around some of the challenges that independent brokerages have around the whole concept. Because a lot of people, you know, they're combing YouTube. They're trying to find the videos. They're trying to find the information. They're talking to people. They're they're calling me up, they're calling you up, they're calling Curtis up, they're calling other people up, and they're trying to do their due diligence. Uh, what are some of the talking points or maybe even some of the pros and challenges and things that you've seen because you've brought several, I should say many, independent brokerages on and you've helped with that whole onboarding process. Uh, talk through some of that. Yeah, well, so first of all, I think one of the challenges in this discussion is that uh, a lot of independent brokerages operate differently. And so y'all look different out there. So but maybe the first thing we could do here right at the beginning is sort of ask you as an independent broker watching this video or sending this to one of your independent broker friends is like, you got to define like, which bucket are you in? Are you that independent broker who um, runs a real estate team that's really a brokerage, right? So it's a team that depends on your leads and administrative services, and they're paying you for sort of a team but you have your own branding and you're independent, right? There's some of those folks. Um, are you an independent broker who maybe does your own production and you just always want your own thing and so you're maybe one of the bigger producers in the brokerage and you got a few other people around you um, as well? Um, or maybe do you fall in sort of the third bucket of you're a larger independent brokerage? I would define you maybe as somebody with 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 200 agents where you might have a team model inside your own brokerage, but you also have a lot of other independent agents that work in your organization. So the reason I say kind of you want to define who you are and where you're at is because I think how you transition and why you might consider transition to EXP depends on which bucket you're in. We see a lot of independent brokers who are really teams operating as independent brokerages that easily jump to EXP with no transition problems. They see the vision for it. Um, Curtis Johnson's a, a pretty good example of that. Curtis, you ran an independent brokerage for many years, right? The Curtis Johnson Realty, and now you're the Curtis Johnson Real Estate Team at EXP Realty. And so your agents have been used to paying you a split for certain things that you provide. And now you just affiliated with a new company that brings even more power to what you're doing. And there wasn't a lot of disruption in that, but you gained a lot of freedom and opportunity, right? Um, there's some other guys out there that join EXP and, and the reason they're joining Nolly is because you know, they're tired of like carrying the weight for their brokerage. Maybe the brokerage isn't making that much money right now or the, the money it is making, a, a lot of it's dependent upon them and their own efforts, right? And, uh, and, and so they're carrying the, carrying the weight on all that. And, uh, and they're looking at EXP going like, man, I got all these outgoing expenses for these agents that don't really do that much for me. Uh, I'm really the one that's making all the money, like the net income in the companies because of me and my efforts. But, you know, EXP would allow me to reduce my expenses and then have a bigger upside. So you got those guys. And then you've got folks that, you know, they're running a team, but they also have these independent agents. And I think those are the most, more challenging ones to, to, to get EXP because um, they instantly, by moving their independent agents over to EXP, they lose the company dollar that the brokerage used to receive because that money now goes to EXP. And those people, they see the long-term fit for what EXP could do, but in the short term, they're like very nervous and not sure about where their money's going to come from. So I don't know that I helped you out with a ton of uh, advice there, but I want to kind of give those three buckets because I see people that normally fall into one or two variations of those. 
powerful stuff. Um, real, real powerful. I think you hit on it really well. Curtis, what do you think about that? You got, you want to add anything? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're all attracted to real estate because your talent wants opportunity and needs opportunity. And if there's no opportunity, talent will leave. And you see that on your own team. This is the biggest opportunity in the history of real estate. And just kind of a little bit about my background. I've been in the business almost 21 years. I started out as a at a, a tiny independent, or actually a pretty big independent, went to Remax because I thought I needed that brand and was with the top agent in the region, everything else like that. Went to the owners, said, hey, what's the next opportunity? Can I buy a franchise? Can I buy in here? And they said, uh, thanks anyways, no. KW came to me and said, hey, come be a part owner in this. And I got about 4% of a market center and was there for a couple years and figured out I invested 24,000 and got zero back. In, in a couple years, I made less than $500 in, in, profit, in profit share, which was better than what I did at Remax. Um, but I really wanted that, that ownership because I thought that was the biggest opportunity. And I started looking going, okay, do I hope for other market centers to clap so I can then buy them and maybe one day in 20 or 30 years, I can be making 10 or 15 or $20,000 off a market center. And because you're, you're kind of taught to, to start, be productive, get a buyer agent, get, you know, get admin, get a listing agent, build that seventh level team. And then I started realizing when I started doing marketing that in order to really be able to do this, really the top of the mountain wasn't just the seventh level or whatever at a, at a brokerage being KW at the time. I realized that I needed that freedom, that autonomy. And so I said, well, you know what? The top of the mountain actually is to go independent. And so I said, in order to be able to accomplish the goals I want, to be able to have the things I want, I've got to in, have to go independent. And so I did that for 12 years, and I realized very, very quickly that wasn't the top of the mountain. That was just a different headache, a different world, a different thing. It was mostly just our team, but it really wasn't um, until I saw this model, if you will, really where I said all the pieces really come together that you can have the support and I like to say that this is one of the lo most lonely industries in, uh, that there's ever been because you're all competing against each other. Well, this is collaboration. This is taking people that you would be, uh, even like Fred and Kevin, they're in my own market. So we could be considered competitors, but we're actually amazing friends because we're actually collaborating. We're doing this. And it actually makes real estate the funnest I've ever had in 21 years because, and the most profitable, honestly, the most profitable, more profitable than even when I quote, I got 100%, I, I owned the brokerage. There was, I didn't have to split with anybody except the IRS, the copier machine man, uh, every other age. I mean, there, there's no such thing as that. There is, if you want something, you have to invest in it. But this is amazing because my team runs more profitably. And in, in my case, EXP gives me back my cap. And then a whole lot more. This is the most profitable model I've ever seen and the most fun. I, I love that. You know, I think, well, I know for a fact, we're all students of the game. You know, when I got Millionaire Real Estate Agent, the book, in 2003, I modeled my, my business off of that. And I did, I read the book three, four times a year. And I know you guys did the same thing. I read it. I read it seven times before I did anything else, and then I recorded it before it came out on audio. So I yeah. record into a in, a in a cassette tape, yeah. and then I listen to it another five times because I had to go through twelve times to master it. Right? Because that's what we do. We're masters. Yeah, you got me beat, man. I, I actually, before, when I got my license, I didn't practice. I got my license in June of two thousand three, but I didn't even practice real estate until December of that year because I was reading Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Every month, I would read it again, read it again, read it again until I until I launched. And so, uh, you definitely got me beat on that, Curtis. But but we're students of the game. Yeah. And I went seventh level in two thousand nine, and I mean it was great. I was able to work three four hours a week and still make you know good amounts of money. But but I saw that there was there, there was another level, and that's the reason why I got my broker's license uh, in two thousand nine ish, and. Um, and my whole thing was, I'm going to start my own real estate company. I'm going to do, but when I really looked at and started talking to other brokers that were doing what I wanted to do, I said, that's not the life I want. And so literally I've had putting my own brokerage on hold for about 10 years until EXP came along. And this is the perfect, perfect, perfect model. And I know that a lot of the brokers that are watching this, if they could, if they could start over from scratch, like today and redo everything again, EXP would be the platform of choice for them to build their brokerage on. 
you know. So, so can we I, talk I, about can we talk about yeah. the ego part of it? Maybe sure. you know, Fred, if you want to jump in, is there's ego when you're running a team. There's ego when you're running a brokerage. That's really you, to be competitive. You've got to do that. But this is a, a, a an ego risk versus right what finances, if you will, an investment, a capital risk, if you will. Yeah, I, I mean, in this particular opportunity, like there, there, uh, I think you know, maybe even two, three years ago with EXP, there was more ego risk because it was unheard of and going there could potentially get you made fun of and everything else. Um, now it's fun and cool, right? Yeah, I mean, now <laughs> it's fun and cool. Tens of thousands of people are, are joining every single year. And so it's, I think a little bit of that's been overcome. But one of the reasons that I think that this transition makes so much sense for EX or for independent brokerages to move to EXP is that they don't have to give up the branding. They don't have to give up the entire ego. A lot of the ego is in the name, right? If, uh, if I want to go um, you know, you know, and, and go to Sotheby's as an example, like I'm immediately going to give up my name. Now Sotheby's has a great name in the higher end, you know, brokerage world. I'm certainly not disrespecting them at all. It's a different type of model. The Sotheby's name matters, right? Um, but so many people want to keep their name because at a local level, people associate with it. It brings goodwill, et cetera. And so um, you're able to do that at eXp. The ego risk of giving it up is that not all the money flows through you. But the gr great news is not all the expenses flow through you either. I mean, I often say that this is better than owning a brokerage. My business partner, Kevin, and I almost opened an independent brokerage. And Curtis slapped us around a little bit and helped me see that was probably not a good idea before I joined eXp. Um, we almost went independent, but what I saw at eXp is that I don't have any capital risk. I don't have to put any money out. I'm not confined to a territory. So even though my license may be hung in one particular state, I have the ability to attract agents throughout the nation and now throughout the world, right, when it comes to eXp. Whereas in an independent brokerage, I'm limited to the states that I have that brokerage operating in from a, from a department of real estate standpoint, right? I don't have the monthly costs and expenses of the copiers and the leases. And, and also the other thing in here is that I don't also have to provide all the value. I don't have to put the training yeah. calendar together every single week or every single month. I don't have to be responsible providing the brokerage services and support. I'm able to plug into an environment where all of these services, all this training, all this value already exists. I get to add on top of the eXp infrastructure, my taste, my flavor, if you will, uh, my ego, if you will, on top of, but it doesn't have to be all about me. Yeah. And because it's not all about me, I'm not financially responsible for it. And when you, when you have all that stuff going for you, the upside becomes even greater. And um, all I can say is that uh, 18 plus months ago, had I, had I opened up an independent brokerage, it would be making nowhere near the amount of money that eXp Realty is now paying me 18 months yeah. later. Um, so I'm saying that as a test case of saying, I, I, even our best estimates weren't anywhere close to what we're making with eXp now yeah. because I'm attracting agents throughout the country and I don't have the capital financial risk. All I've got is maybe an ego risk. I've associated with a company that some might make fun of, isn't exactly only my name on the door, but the upside is, is tremendous. Yeah. You know, I'll just jump in on that real quick too. Just real quick. Uh, 10 years ago, when I switched from Remax to Keller Williams, people thought I was nuts. I was one of yeah. the top 10 Remax agents in the state of Texas. And they're like, you're going where? What's the name of that company again? And it, it's just, it's amazing. And so, but it was, at the time, it was the best move I could have made, okay? Now, it, it's, you know, just speaking real quick on the revenue share piece of this whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it is absolutely phenomenal. This is the piece that allowed me to give up 720,000 average that I was making per year, being able to go and speak at Keller Williams Market Centers. Um, you know, I was immediately going to give up that revenue. You know, you're yeah. talking about 60 grand a month. But I, but, but when you see the potential, and a lot of people, if they haven't moved already, I'm, I'm thinking it's just because they haven't really studied that enough. Sure. To really see and put the math behind it. Because I studied it, guys. I mean, I studied it deep. And uh, Curtis, you're living it right now. I'm, I'm on the back end of that. Uh, but, but what I saw was if instead of creating an independent brokerage myself with 30 or 20, you know, 20, 30 or 40 people in my brokerage, I could just put those in my first leg at eXp and let yeah. that thing grow into thousands of people. 
Yeah. And that's the that's the model that I chose. Could you speak on that some some as well, guys? Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll kind of dive in there. It's kind of the elephant in the room, right? As far as you know, from a profitability and from a you're running a brokerage and everybody acts like everything's all beautiful and all rainbows and everything's great. Well, you know what? The reality is when you really dive into people's uh, P and Ls and you look at it, there's very limited uh, profit margins in there unless you're actually producing, and that's why. The, one of the biggest group that comes and joins are people that go, hey, you know what, what's my exit strategy? And then they go and they interview with, um, you know, all these different major franchises and they say, give me a value on my business. And they're just absolutely devastated when they get that number and they realize when they extract out themselves, it's really very, very, very limited um, value in it. And I, and I think as someone that went through, again, being in the business over 20 years, someone that went through this massive crash here in Arizona, one of the things that, you know, I, I as my business just absolutely was just floored and devastated going through all of that, looking at it going, you know what, what do we do? How do we do this so that we're, all of our eggs aren't in one basket? And one of the things that this does is this came out of the ashes of this 10 years ago of saying, hey, we can't just have all of the risk in in one spot and being this model allows me to have kind of almost like the mutual fund approach in 48 different states and I've been with the company less than two years and I've brought in 40 40 people right I'm not a great recruiter 40 people but yet those people have gone and I couldn't shut them up and they, they won't stop growing to where it's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of almost 2,000 people and Again, that's not from my efforts. I've done some of it, but I've just I've done a little piece of it, and then it, it kind of expands. But what that does is this fills in the gaps. And let's just be real about it. We do this as real estate agents. Is we it's cyclical and, and, and through seasons. When you go through January, February into the summer, and then back down, we learn to live with those different things. So sometimes brokers will look at this and go, "Well, I can't handle." the next two or three months transitioning into this. And I go, that's just silly because you do this all the time. You look at this and everything's seasonal. So you can handle a couple months. What it is, is it is the ego risk because we're used to being looking through this, but now because they're partnership and now you're getting to, to um, displace the risk among a lot of different people, you're able to fill in those gaps. So guess what? We're going into, we're in November right now. We're going in November and I'm starting to build my, my revenue ship for December, which is arguably one of the slowest months. And all of my bills, all everything, everything I could spend at Amazon is already covered, right? All everything's just out there. It's taken care of. That's filling in the gaps. How, how cool is that to go into a month going, you know what? If we didn't even sell a house, we're good. Like it would be great to sell houses. Don't get me wrong. But like, if not, okay, we're okay. And that's what this model allows you to be able to do is because you're able to pour into other people, you're able to make your business profitable um, and fill in some of those gaps, if you will. Yeah, Curtis, I I, I've seen your revenue share. I don't, I don't think you're just filling in gaps anymore, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one, job, uh, one other thing I'd like to bring up, because I know if you're watching this right now, like, you know, we haven't said this, but we understand this. Um, you, you only consider a move like this if, if not only do you feel it's in your best interest, but it's also in the best interest of your agents, right? Like, and, and that comes through really deep dive discovering what is at EXP. I, I've heard some people though recently, independent brokers look at it and say, well, I don't really know if it, you know, if it's better for my agents. And I've kind of, you know, I, because they're not on here right now, I'll speak a little bit more directly. I, I, I call BS on that. I, I think at the end of the day, show me an independent real estate brokerage model where I can be awarded shares of stock for just doing things like selling houses where I can have uh, you know, savings built for retirement through revenue share and stock. Show me an independent real estate brokerage offering more than 40 hours of training every single week. Show me an independent real estate brokerage with more than 11 hours of administrative support and transactions and accounting every single day of the week, right? It just doesn't exist. And if you- as and, an and over 600 broker, employees. Exactly, over 600 employees, right? And if you as an independent broker are considering joining eXp, guess what? You're coming with. So whatever it is that you think you're providing that's a value to agents that may not be at eXp, I challenge that it's not there, you get to come bring it over to eXp with you. So everything that you have and you bring to your agents that's value, I would challenge that most of it, the value is in you as the leader. They look up to you. They get something from you. You come But, let, but let's, let's, also, let's, let's also be honest here. I think all three of us, and I'd say almost everybody watching this, 
initially looks at it going, how, what can I learn to extract that I can keep in my own business and just do it better? Then you look at it and you go, well, that's silly. It's already built. Like, <laughs> it's already there. You just plug into a system that has stuff that you can't provide right now and you get to add you on top. So I just want to put that out there too. Now, I understand there are some brokerage models where maybe you've got a different split system than, than EXP and you're trying to figure out how will your agents react to possibly paying a few percentage points more on every transaction or getting a different CRM or whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, look back in your brokerage three years ago, I promise your fee structure wasn't the same and your technology wasn't the same and you still have agents with you today. So what I mean by that is that, yeah, change disrupts things a little bit. A lot of people are not you know, open to change at first, but if you really look at this model, sure, change comes with it, but we're talking about additional value, adding on top of what you already do and opening up your world and all of your agents' worlds to have an unfair real estate model that you can't provide to them today. I, don't, I doubt if you're watching this right now, you have a stock plan for your agents. I doubt you have a seven level deep revenue share plan that goes across 50 states, seven Canadian provinces, and a couple other countries. Like, I just doubt that you have that built in. So why not consider, instead of looking at, I don't know how my agents will respond, bring the best of you over to eXp and let your agents see the best of eXp. And you put those two things together and you have a powerful combination. I think what I what I'd like to do now, guys, um, is just throw out a call to action. We can we can have some closing remarks, but if you're watching this, you have questions around this, just reach out to one of us. You know, reach out to Curtis, reach out to Fred, reach out to myself, and um, and we'll answer those questions for you. We're not going to try to talk you into something that's not good for you, but we will answer your questions honestly. I mean, we've been at this a long, long, long time, collectively. Um, well. Fred, I'll just say this. You're the baby of the bunch. <laughs> 15 years in real estate and I'm the baby. How is, how is that? Yeah. So I've got about 15. You've got 15. Curtis has 20. So we've got 50 years of real estate experience and we've run companies. I mean, you guys uh, have 30, uh, what, 30 plus team members? Uh, 50 plus on, in our organization. Yeah. 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 With over, with over uh, 400 transactions a year. I mean, we know what we're doing. So if you have a question around this, this is the call to action. Reach out. Uh, we'll have the contact information down below. Reach out to one of us. We'll answer your questions honestly, objectively. And, uh, of course, we, we love EXP, so we're going to answer. But you, you might have some real questions around that. So, so don't, don't be shy about reaching out to one of us. So any closing comments, guys? I know we touched on quite a bit. We're trying to keep this video as short as we can, but this is some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say my closing comment is I can't wait for part two and maybe part three. I'd love to walk through a few examples of um, different structures of brokerages that we've seen move from independent to EXP, speak very openly about the ones that worked well and the ones that didn't, talk about what worked and what didn't in the transition. We've had some successful ones and very transparently, we've had some unsuccessful ones and we've learned a lot along the way and how the leader reacts and uh, responds and communicates <laughs> and their confidence level in this and uh, the depth to which they involve their top agents in it and you know the, their connection to the future of what they're going to build versus today it's kind of like if you're an independent broker out there you got to look at this and go i'm getting into real estate all over again and i don't want to be the new agent that says how do i make the most amount of money in the next 90 days if that's your goal this probably isn't the model for you but if you say how do i build an amazing career in real estate an amazing career at exp over the next nine years how big can that get that's going to get really big if we can focus on that. And then we can backfill and talk about how to overcome a little bit of the going backwards, perhaps before you go forwards. Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave with this. Again, I said the, the biggest, uh, your biggest opportunities attract the biggest talent. And I would just say is, this might be contrary to what you think, is EXP is not, if you're the dud, like if you're just really not that great, EXP is not going to fix you. If your brokerage is completely broken and you're not a great leader exp is not going to solve that what exp does is it takes winners and makes them win bigger and faster and more profitable so if you're on that path if you're a giver it's going to make you it's going to open up the field for you if if you're running if you're dishonest if you're take, trying to take advantage of people if you're doing all these things or you know, even if you're just really a bad business owner, it's not going to solve all those problems, right? The, your brokerage is not the solution to all these different things. This model is amazing. This model will make you more of what, what you are, right? They say, 
you know, money, money doesn't solve people. If you're an a-hole before and you get money, you're just a bigger a-hole, right? And the same thing with this is if you're a great business owner, if you just need a better model, this is going to be your, you know, triumph right here. It's just going to be incredible for you. So I would just say is, is look for things um, that are going to make you more of what you are, right? Bring out your best. And what this will do is you've got a finite amount of energy in, in finances, everything else like that. Where do you want to put those? Do you want to do it doing, like I hated doing broker paperwork and doing stuff like that. I'd much rather be pouring into an agent and be able to help them get their career going. And so where are you going to spend your time? And if you're really that amazing, you should be spending your time on helping give back to people and help grow. And so we tell people all the time, don't spend time on, you know, low, low dollar activities. Well, guess what? Being a broker, sorry, is a low dollar activity. Building and growing is a high dollar activity and it can be exponential. I think I hear you saying, uh, Curtis, re-examine the reasons why you're doing what you do. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's something that we have to uh, continue to do. We have to really examine our, the trajectory of our life and where it's headed. And, and instead of just continuing to do what we've always done, really look at it and say, why in the world did I get in this business in the first place? And am I living that dream life that I, that I, you know, that I got in this for? And if not, this is the best playground I've ever seen to live your dream. I love it. So the reason I called this meeting together, guys, is because I combed YouTube. Uh, when I was considering joining EXP myself, I looked all over the internet to try to find videos like this. And I feel like this will add value to people, like for you watching, this, this adds value to you being able to kind of hear, um, you know, I feel objective, you know, we're, we're on this side of it, but we've, we've been for many, many, many years on the other side. So I feel like we have a very objective uh, viewpoint on this. So thank you guys. You guys were outstanding. Appreciate you. And we'll catch you on the next one.